Hello everybody, my name is Naya and I'm the Black Female Engineer and today we are going to be discussing my coding bootcamp experience which is really going to also be a Flatiron School uh, coding bootcamp review as well. So getting right to it, I started my coding bootcamp June 29th, uh, last week of June. I started the last week of June and the first thing that struck me were the class sizes. Before because I'm pretty sure you know this is going to, to really make sure that we're on, all on the same page. Because of this whole parallelogram, I was online. But that doesn't mean in the selection of you know what kind of course are you doing. That doesn't mean that I chose an online course. I, I didn't choose that program. This was still the in-person, but because of everything going on, it was through Zoom. So live sessions through Zoom, rather than if you chose an online bootcamp, it would be non-live sessions. Um, it would be more self-paced. And so this was really as in-person as it can be without being in-person. So first thing that struck me were the class sizes. They were smaller than I envisioned. I don't know if that is typical for Flatiron School um, or anything like that. Oh yeah, I don't think I mentioned that. I went to Flatiron School. That is the coding boot camp I went to for four months um, and it was specifically the software engineering uh, coding boot camp or the software engineering course. So I don't know if 15 people was typical uh, was a typical class size for them. It might have or it might not have because maybe people decided to hold off on going into coding bootcamp because of this whole panoramic going on. But you know what? A year later, you should have just joined the bootcamp because look at where we are. But um, it's not too late. Like, please, if you want to like do something, like just go out, do it, do it now because you don't know how long things are gonna last. But yeah, so it's 15 people, and now the second thing that really struck me was the two women in the entire cohort, one of them being myself. And so I was kind of expecting this, like I do know that, you know, the tech world and software engineering really in particular is very male dominated. I do understand that, but I don't know, y'all like still being in there and still seeing just like the one female face, I was still kind of like, Come on, like, let's do better than this. But you know what, on the bright side, you know, that was an instant, you know, homie, an instant best friend for the cohort. So, you know, it things work out, you make the best of any situation, but it was, um, that is something that did strike me. I was the youngest person in the boot camp. I'm 22 years old, and I'd want to say the average age, it wasn't, you know, too skewed, but I'd say the average age was about 29 between 29 and 31 yeah so like in between there um like it seems like you know everyone i was with you know had full-blown husbands and wives and children they had full-blown you know lives and people to be accountable for and meanwhile i'm over here pressing play for the zoom in my you know onesie and everything so you know that was something that did make me nervous because i was just like geez like how are they gonna look at me? Like, they're gonna not take me seriously. They're not gonna, you know, think I'm skilled enough or they think, you know, X, Y. But overwhelmingly, like that was honestly all just like a moot point. Like we were all in here for the same reason. We were trying to switch from one industry to the next and we were all make, wanting to make sure that we got through it. So for the most part, like that really wasn't a, you know, a big factor um, and it shouldn't be a deterrent to anyone who may feel like an outlier um, because at the end of the day like y'all we're all just trying to make sure we succeed and get through this and that very much was the vibe that's another thing I felt going in like I thought that it would be like the Hunger Games like the whole vibe was like fight to the finish, like move out of my way, like, each person for themselves. But it was not like that at all. Like even like like eight days in, I was over here having um, just like a one-on-one -on -one Zoom session with one of my classmates who was helping me get through um, one of the topics that I was struggling on. And this was at like 8 p.m. We spoke for like an hour and a half and everything. Like it was very much a thing of we are all gonna make sure to get through this. Now, that being said, you know, only half of us, 
<laughs> got through it. Um, we only half of us made it to our original, you know, graduation day and all. But you know what? Coding boot camp is hard, and people, you know, wean off of it or you know decide to take a step back or anything for any number of reasons. It doesn't always mean that you know they weren't, you know, they couldn't do it or anything. Like they, they're not smart enough. They're not. No, it's none of that. Just. A lot of people may realize that this isn't the path for them and continue searching elsewhere or that, you know, the timing just was off. So it could be for a number of reasons, but I just want to make it clear or just provide that insight of the people you do start with. They likely will not be the same people you end up with. Um, and it's very sad and disappointing, but that's just the last is where we're at with that. So now getting into what a day looked like at Flatiron School. So we were started off at around 9 a.m. Um, with a morning stand-up. So some companies have this, some schools have this, but you wake up, you know, 9 a.m. For us, it was, you know, Zoom. We opened our Zoom and it started with an first of all like an update of how everyone's feeling how everyone's doing just like catching up and then it went into trying to gauge how the students um, felt about certain topics and chapters and um, content and the teachers really wrapping their lessons um, around that so that's something I absolutely loved with Flatiron School the teachers really wrapped their lessons plan their lesson plans around what the students were wanting to see more of, wanting to get more practice in and everything. They of course had their own, you know, on this day we're gonna learn Ruby and then we're gonna learn, you know, Rails and then we're gonna learn JavaScript and things like that. But it also was, okay, here is what we have planned and this is, you know, what the schedule is going to be. But if a student was like, hey, I'd actually also really like a repeat of yesterday's lesson or, um, be able to talk about this or this or this even if it wasn't even in like the syllabus but like hey i really want to learn you know node or something then like a teacher would make sure to provide something for that student to really make sure they're getting out of it what they want to see because y'all that's 18 like thousand dollars you know anywhere from coding boot camps like 12 to twenty thousand dollars so like and some more, you know, so and then some less. But you really want to make sure you are getting out of it everything you can. And as a student, really making sure that you are speaking up and saying, look, like, you need to go through this again because I don't know why, but my brain is not sticking to it. So please just like give me another lesson of this. And they were so gracious constantly and just fantastic in that regard. So that is what stand up really. Um, encompassed it was hey how are you how's everyone feeling and then how are we going to get through this day what are our lessons going to be looking like and then what are things that some people may specifically want and let's see how we can integrate that into the day as well then 6 p.m was really when we were like okay like laptops off because stand down would be between like 5 15 and like 5 40 and stand down was really kind of like a repeat of the morning stand up but instead really being able to like unwind and like wind down so what did you learn today um what's something you're like thankful for what's something you'd like want to just like talk about or like in just like in your lives um and great you all did a great job and we'll see you all tomorrow this really allowed people to like have a time where they were like you know at this time i end and like laptops off because what um sometimes happens is if classes or jobs or any of the sorts if they don't do that and don't have like an actual like stand down then students or you know employees just keep going and going and going because they weren't given like permission to be done and so this kind of like gave people permission to be done so that is really when the day ended and as for the day itself it was a mix between teacher led lessons where the teacher would share their screen and you know you would have your you know code pulled up and be coding along or taking notes depending on what the lesson really called for it was a mix between that and having more of like 
self-instruction based on like the chapters you're on and things like that. And I, I say chapters just because I feel like that's something all of us, you know, recognize. But um, what it really was, was a portal where we could see uh, all the things that we're supposed to know by which by which point in time and once you learn this you should learn this and it would have tutorials and you know actual lessons and like like chapters like like a book and so it would be a mix between switching back and forth between the teacher's lessons and going to your like book and um, going through that cycle and that process as well so a mix of those two getting you to that you know stand down mark so that was day to day. Now, if you look at more like bigger picture, so every third week we had a project we had to do. The project was just, you know, building some type of app, web app or an actual mobile app, building some kind of app with some kind of either technology or framework or something that had been taught during the last, you know, three weeks. So Fire in School, we had modules. Um, modules like chapters think of them just as chapters where every three weeks it was a new module so we had five modules in total and it went from yeah like module one being like ruby then module two being rails then module three being like javascript uh four being react and then module five was more self-guided module where you build your own app and it's something that you know you is a culmination of the last you know four months of the program so that is how things are split up and so like i said every three weeks was a different module and at the end of every three weeks you were to build a an app of some kind but then every two weeks like every second week of a module was like kind of like exam time where you kind of had to like pass the test pass a test um i say test lightly they if someone's watching this from Flatiron School, you know that, you know, they didn't like the word test. It's not a test, but it's a test. Like, let's call, you know, a spade a spade. Let's, you know, let's say what it is. It was a test and whether or not you passed it determined on if you could move on to the next module or if you were quote unquote held back. Held back being that you had the option of retaking the module, but if you retook the module, you were held back you were now on a delay of like six weeks um, because you were waiting for the next cohort to come in and now you're taking this new module with the new cohort. It's very confusing, um, but basically, yeah, you were held back just like how, you know, if it's like ninth grade and you weren't able to pass the class and so now you're held back, but you need to wait the summer um, for you to join the next incoming class to join them and now you're part of their you know graduating year and everything and now that those are your people same exact um thing with Flatiron. you had to wait six weeks and join a new class but yeah every two weeks you had a test every three weeks you had a project so overall the things i appreciated most of Flatiron, i mentioned this before was the focus on the students the focus on what do the students like and don't like and what are they struggling on? What do they need more assistance with? Uh, let's make sure we structure our day and our week based on assisting that. Or even not even struggling, but what do they want to learn? Like, okay, this person wants to learn material UI. Like, okay, let's put in slots for learning just that and let's make sure a teacher is able to teach just that for the people who are interested in that. And so just because something wasn't like on the like, you know, syllabus and everything didn't mean that we couldn't learn it. That being said, I don't know if that is the way for every single flat iron um, like location and school and everything. I was part of the Denver school. I don't know if that is the same case for everybody, but that's how it was for me. Something I do wish flat iron incorporated more, I'd say were would be algorithms. Um, there really wasn't a ton of time to incorporate algorithms into the structure because yeah, it's a very fast turnaround um, with this boot camp and everything. And so sometimes you just didn't have time, but you know, if it was a perfect world, I do wish there had been a module just dedicated to algorithms so that, you know, when you get to the interviewing process and things like that, you felt more prepared rather than you were on your 
own. We were never on our own in fantasy school, I'll say that. But yeah, feeling like you were now doing this by yourself and having to learn this other side of things just so you can get a job, even though you may not even work with specific algo stuff and things like that. So that is something I do um, wish in a perfect world had been incorporated. But in general, I loved Flatiron School. I would, if the tuition was double, I still would have paid it knowing what I know now. And I ended up getting a job um, just three weeks after graduation. My first offer was just a few hours after graduation. And I ended up getting a job just signing on the job I really, really wanted um, three weeks after graduation. So they prepared me very well, I'd say, and I'm very grateful. So there we go, there is my coding bootcamp experience and my overall review on Flatiron School. So no, please subscribe if you like this video. I'm really trying to get to 100 subscribers. So please help me out there and there is going to be a video coming to you soon. So no, thank you. Bye y'all.